there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from my Stain Gamers, and welcome. So today, I wanted to conduct some rather interesting ramming tests. By ramming tests, I mean basically crashing ships into various objects and seeing exactly what happens. And then on top of that, I want to do a little bit more scientific stuff, but there's always an element of clang involved in Space Engineers, and you can't be as precise as you want. Now as my cockpit wiggles off and falls out of the asteroid and there's completely nothing left of this ship, let's begin the scientific process of ramming ships into random objects. <laughs> Get ready. So first up, I took the hammerhead that you saw the other day from the Steam Workshop and I thought this would be a good ship to actually test out with its ramming capabilities just to see how it is. And now it's ramming up against a light armor block that I believe is 5 or 6 thick and it is not a station so it will move when impacted. And you can see the first effect that we're actually getting is a little bit of lag. And you notice there's an explosion towards the rear of the ship. Now what's actually happening here is some of the blocks are being broken off the front of the ship. And since they're at such a speed, they're actually getting shot back down the main shaft of the ship. Transpa or sort of passing through the walls of the ship, weirdly glitchily sort of thing. A little bit of an element of clang to it. And you can see the hammer itself has actually taken quite a blunt of the bro. The bro? The blow? The bl oh, fuck, he's on crack now. So basically, the hammerhead ship here at this point is no longer functional. The bridge is completely destroyed, and we've penetrated through one layer, and we've got a little bit of an impact onto the second layer itself. So let's just go down and actually have a quick look at the front of the ship itself. So you can see the hammerhead's destroyed, and we've also got that weird explosion back there. Like I said, I believe some of the blocks have been pushed back from the front into that area, or even some of the conveyors snapping off. So second test, I wanted to hit it into an asteroid. So the interesting thing about an asteroid is it's a very heavy and the rock itself is very dense and it will not move. So you can see here we've actually suffered more damage to the front of the ship because of that asteroid. And at this current moment in time you can see how it's sort of sparking, glitching out as some of them blocks are still being ripped off the front of that ship. So if we have a look from this underneath angle you can see we've got a lot of loose blocks and they're the loose blocks that are getting sent back down the hull of the ship itself causing damage to some of the rear areas. So if it comes to a head-on collision with an asteroid, you're pretty much guaranteed to lose the front half of your ship. Or if it comes from the side, you could even be cut in two, depending on how thick your ship is. Now the final test I wanted to do with the hammerhead was ram it into itself to see sort of what sort of damage we get. We get this almost fusion-like effect, and you can see there's a lot more explosions going on at the back of the ships on either side as well. So you can see some of them blocks have actually been passed through and exploded further back. That one actually reached really far back into that right ship. And since it's static and they both have equal power, it means that we've got a situation where they will not be able to push each other any further out of the way. So we've just got that little bit of motion and we've also got the complete hammerhead sort of cockpit bridge area that's been snapped off into two. We've got quite a lot of loose blocks. I remember doing some of these tests in earlier builds, builds of the game and basically you wouldn't end up with all these fragments, all these pieces. This is one of them rear areas where the blocks have actually been forced backwards. You can see, I think, what's responsible for doing this is a combination of gyroscopes being ripped off as well as conveyor pipes and conveyor blocks being ripped off as well. Because if I dip into this area here, you can just roughly see that was the area where the gyroscopes were stored. So the next ship I wanted to test out was this guy itself. Of course, there'll be links to them both in the description below. And you can see this one is much heavily armoured at the front. So we've got much more penetrating power. And something I forgot to do with this particular test was to turn off the thrusters. But at the same time, this led to this rather interesting effect. As the ship kept pushing, it actually pushed the two armoured tykes out of the way. Let's have a look at what sort of damage we've got to the front. Not much that, not much of damage really is, is super. It's more artificial compared to the front. That's probably because there's all this armour that's actually wrapped around them engines up at the front of this particular one. So if we have a quick dip in, you can see we've penetrated two whole tanks. Now next up, we have the asteroid. And this happened. Basically, the light on the front of the ship managed to make the whole ship bounce off an asteroid. I tried to repeat this test and it didn't happen again. It just went straight into the asteroid. And in fact, since there was so much thrust and sort of volume to this ship as it was being thrusted into the asteroid, it actually continued to rip itself apart until there was absolutely nothing. This was the actual clip that you saw in the introduction. Now what I believe is happening here is because the engines are still pushing it into the asteroid and the asteroid has nowhere to go, it basically just consumes the ship until it breaks my cockpit off, breaks away half the thrusters and there's nothing more to actually push it into the asteroid itself. 
a very interesting sorts of results. And there goes my cockpit bouncing off down the side. And we're just left with a whole variety of different pieces that can't thrust or destroy themselves within the asteroid. Now, there's a head-on collision between the same ship, and what's really beautiful about this particular one is how we get this sort of fusion effect. You can see how the light's sort of seizing the two ships together. At one point, I almost imagined that this ship, if it was like on a weird sort of clang base level, could just become one ship and it would just click together with that weird sort of buggy effect that you get sometimes. So now that the ship's actually seized itself together, you've got a few blocks that have been thrown out to the side, and you've got this really nice connection between the two ships itself with a little crack down the middle just absolutely beautiful to watch and inside here was the hangar bay something that's really responsible for a lot of the damage though is them heavily armored armored door blocks as well as the gyroscopes and conveyors having a lot of them in particular areas of your ship seems to cause a lot of damage so for the next test i wanted to do it on a bit of a smaller scale so i took a henry variant of the ship and that was just a single henry and that was for the first test what i want to do now is see if i double the mass of the henry by sticking two henrys together technically doubling it in weight will it create better penetration on the target so here is a double henry being launched towards the target i've actually stacked it at the back so the initial impact won't create or be spread out or dissipated across the target itself and from initial looks it looked like it penetrated further into the target so i started to think is the weight going to be a key factor in this like it would be in the real world a higher weight at a higher velocity is going to penetrate harder than a lighter softer sort of warhead or ship in this case that's hit these little craters but i tested out a little bit more and i realized the craters between both the large and the small henry variations weren't really too different in the amount of penetration they actually penetrated so that was a lot of same penetration Aaron, wasn't it so moving on we've also got this thing that's now going to penetrate another penetration of this target itself so what i wanted to do here was concentrate all the power into one small point and by doing so the heavy armor actual tube has broke a really nice narrow path and then it's bent up wrapped itself around there and also penetrated through the second target and it led to me wanting to experiment a little bit more so this time i've took some very basic two blocks on the left we have a heavy armored block and on the right we have a light armored block and i wanted to see if mass alone not the shape would actually affect how these impacted so this is the heavy armor block going at the target and we've got penetration of the first target with the block completely being destroyed now this is the light armor block going at the target and it's pretty much done the exact same thing so i experimented a little bit further repeating this test and I got to such a stage where I realized even if I used a heavy armor or light armor that weighed different sort of weights, it didn't really affect it too much at all. And I think this is just a really unrealistic factor of this. There's a lot of factors that come into play. So that was just another light armor block. And once again, it penetrated all the way through, just like the heavy armor did. So I was quite surprised with these results. Anyway. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this experiment in the test, well, in the comments below. And would you like me to try and retest these and make it a little bit more scientific? But I found it very interesting. And I'll see you.